This is QTV News and I am Jenna Basanko. Coming up. U.S. Banjul Embassy commemorates 2nd July 1976, the day the resolution declaring U.S. independence was passed. As construction starts at the Basse Wooly Bridge, there are a variety of views on its expected benefits. Some see the bridge as a threat to their river-based businesses, others welcome the prospect. As smartphones outnumber the world's population, we ask how dangerous is this addiction? Are people spending more time with their phones than their friends and family? The Japanese government has donated fertilizers and groundnut seeds to the Gambia. The donated items are meant to help boost agricultural production. For more on this and other stories, stay tuned. With the Basse Wooly Bridge under construction, some boat owners who ferry people and goods fear they might lose their source of livelihoods. However, others think the bridge will ease transportation. Our reporter Momotu Gajaga took a boat trip and spoke to those in the boat business. River transport has long been a challenging undertaking in the Gambia. From delays to poor ferry services, passengers are left with no choice but to use small boats to cross. However, this means of transport may soon come to an end when the Basse Woolley Bridge is completed. Antumana Kamara is one of the boat owners and captain who ferries people and goods from both banks of the river. Business is not booming at all. We're just managing. Sometimes customers will pay $5 when the fare is $10. But their excuse is that it is what they can afford. In fact, for electronic boats like ours, the fare is $25, but due to their spending power, they only pay a fraction of that. My biggest worry is that after buying four boats, each costing $120,000, the construction of the bridge means my money is going to waste. I am urging the government to help us with another source of livelihood. It could possibly be a garden or something else on which we can depend for our income. We've been discouraged by the government from the use of dangerous journey to Europe, locally known as Parkway. So now, employment opportunities should be created for the youth. Ali Uso, another boat owner, sees things differently. He says the benefit of the bridge far outweigh its possible negative effect on business. This bridge is very good for us. Despite the fact that I will lose my job once it's operational, there have been cases of emergencies that showed what can happen when relying only on the ferry. I can still recall once, very early in the morning around 3 a.m., when there was a heavy downpour, an ambulance carrying a pregnant woman on the verge of delivery, the horn was blown several times and there was no ferry in operation at the time. I ferried them with my boat, and as soon as we arrived at the health center, the woman delivered. So for me, the bridge will help in tackling all these problems. The borough administration has embarked on a massive range of infrastructural projects, including roads and bridges. Opinions are divided on such projects, with some arguing that healthcare, education, and agriculture should be prioritized, while others argued in support of infrastructural projects. Momodu Gajaga, QTV News. Diplomats, senior government officials and other dignitaries gathered at a hotel in Bijilu to commemorate 2nd July 1776, the day the resolution declaring U.S. independence was passed. Aliu Sise was in attendance and he now reports. It was on July 2nd, 1776, 243 years ago, that the resolution declaring U.S. independence was passed by the Continental Congress. The more widely known 4th July Independence Day is an important federal holiday in the United States commemorating the adoption of the Declaration of Independence from British rule on 4th July in 1776. Tuesday's event, organized by the U.S. Embassy in Banjul, focused on the celebration of Apollo 50, 
the American agency NASA's honoring of space exploration and specifically the 50th anniversary of landing the first man on the moon on 11 July 1969. It is an opportunity to reflect on the importance of science and technology education. Presiding over the event for the first time, the new U.S. ambassador to the Gambia, Richard Pascal, said the Gambia, like many other countries, also played an important role in the U.S. space program. What many of you may not know is that this country, the Gambia, also played an important role in the U.S. space program. The Gambia partnered with NASA to support the many launches of the U.S. space shuttle. The airport at Yundum was the site of U.S. Gambian cooperation in the event the space shuttle was required to make an emergency landing. And I am proud to say that we continue that cooperation to this day. Through bold vision, bravery, cooperation, and education, the effort to land human beings on the moon was successful. Ambassador Pascal called for more investment in the youth to prepare them for an ever-changing world. He expressed his delight at plans by the Gambia government to transform science, technology, engineering, and math education in the country. Supporting improvement in education is one of our primary goals in the Gambia, and we are proud to partner with the government of the Gambia as it works to revolutionize STEM education. Claudiana Cole, Minister of Basic and Secondary Education, and Badra Jove, Higher Education Minister, respectively, said STEM education plays an important role in national development. However, retaining few available STEM teachers remains a challenge. Higher Education Minister Badra Jove explains his ministry's plans towards improving STEM education. We want to have at least 65 to 70 percent policy turnaround in science, engineering, and technology. And that is why we have taken the decision that anybody who is coming to the university doing those subjects will be given scholarships automatically. Deputizing for the Foreign Affairs Minister, Attorney General and Justice Minister Abubakar Tambadu congratulated the people and government of the U.S. on their independence anniversary, describing the U.S. as a close development partner to the Gambia. The relationship between the United States and the Republic of the Gambia is based on our shared values of democracy and human rights. The United States, through its agencies over the years, USAID, Peace Corps, etc., works with the government or has worked with the government of the Gambia and civil society organizations to strengthen democratic institutions, support good governance, advance human rights, and supported education. Minister Tambadu reaffirmed the Gambia government's commitment to further strengthen the bilateral cooperation with the U.S., especially in bringing about global peace. With a population of over 3 million people, the U.S. is the third most populous country and undoubtedly one of the most powerful. Independence Day celebrations in the United States, a public holiday, are usually marked by fireworks, parades, political ceremonies and concerts. Reporting for QTV News, I am Ali Usise. Happy Independence Day to the United States of America. 25 military officers of the Gambia Armed Forces were promoted to various ranks at a ceremony held at the Joint Officers Mess in Kotu. Our Babu Karsi attended the ceremony and he now reports. The officers decorated include four officers promoted from second lieutenant to lieutenant and the equivalent sub-lieutenant for those from the Navy and 21 officers elevated from lieutenant to captain and the equivalent Navy lieutenant for those from the Navy. Addressing the gathering and the newly decorated officers, Lieutenant General Masane Kinte, Chief of Defense Staff, said the president is hugely interested in the welfare of the security forces of the country. During the decoration and swearing in ceremony of the first batch of officers promoted, I underscore the importance His Excellency, the President and Commander in Chief, attaches to the affairs of the Gambia Armed Forces. These, among others, include his support and commitment in the transformative agenda of the security sector in general and the Gambia Armed Forces in particular. I am very happy to report that these officers decorated here today have distinguished themselves by successfully going through a professional process that was instituted by my office. CDS Kinte went on to advise the promoted soldiers to be loyal to their nation and be ready to serve her people. As you rejoice over this achievement, you must remember that promotions come with added responsibilities and challenges. Hence, you need to be reminded as officers to maintain the high standard of discipline, 
loyalty and commitment to national duties at all times. You will no doubt come across greater challenges that are synonymous or equivalent to your new roles and responsibilities. However, you need not quit or fear these challenges, but rather face them with the right attitude and the frame of mind, and uh, God willing, we'll all join hands to see you through. A total of 696 GAF personnel have been promoted to various ranks this year, and also probably since the new political dispensation, comprising 70 officers and 626 other ranks. Yeah. Yeah, my Babu Karsi, QTV News. We will take a short commercial break, and when we return, the news continues. Life is sweet like chocolate. I'm steady counting blessings every day. It's so time. It's fashion time. It's happening live at QCity on the 13th of July. It's Tobaski Act Style. Don't miss any moment of our Tobaski catwalk. Make your Tobaski outfit choices with classic designers featuring Adiso, Samuras, S Dam, Aga Creation, Ada Creation, ANS Design, Gora Bitek, Wali Shop, Schoolboy Shop, Ruru Doll, ML Creation, SD International, Oldest Creation, CK Creation, Zamzam Kutir, and Polo Textiles. Tickets, VIP, $500 and regular $200 only. Come join the exciting fashion journey with QTV's Tobaski Axe Style on the 13th July at Q City. For more information and tickets inquiry, please call 3244444 or send us an email marketing at qtv.gm. Now the young nigga be balling. <laughs> QSL proudly brings you yet another new number series, the 5-2 and 5-3 number series. We now have a massive subscriber base of 1.2 million that is still expanding. So QSL is also expanding its number series to accommodate more people as they join our amazing network. The new 5-2 and 5-3 number series have the same fantastic services and the same great charges as the 3 Five zero and five one number series. No different. Call, text, browse the net and roam all over the world with the five two and five three number series. There are no limits as you communicate with the Gambia's trusted network. You sell Sunubus, the Gambia's quality network. The smartphone is one of the most used communication tools in modern times. It has, however, led to addiction for many who use it daily, for either social or official uses. Across the world today and in the Gambia, specifically, has the smartphone changed people for good or bad? Mumudu Laman Choi was out to get the story on how smartphones have changed today's society. As technology changes and takes shape, so lives are shaped by it today. Communication is as old as human existence, but there is a shift in the means of communication today. Addiction to drugs can be strong, but people have found a new technology stimulant, the smartphone. This is causing a significant change in how people interact with one another, be it at official or family level. There is a lot of research evidence that is showing that a lot of people now, there is a lot of marital breakdowns. Why? Because of the phone. There is a lot of uh, lack of interaction between family members because of the mobile phone. You go to houses to visit. Uh, first of all, before everyone was glued on the TV, at least they would comment on what they are watching. But now a lot of people are glued on the TV, but they are glued on their mobile phones. Even during work and lesson hours in the Gambia, Many people can't stay away from their smartphone. Instead, they browse social media sites, listen to music, among many other distractions, thereby wasting valuable time that takes them away from their works and academic pursuits. As a journalist, I could make the excuse that I need to check my phone all day long. 
I checked it today. There were messages sent on a journalist link on WhatsApp that were three hours old. But I hadn't looked at it for three hours. I had not looked at my phone for three hours. Nobody died because I didn't do that. Neither did I. And I think that's the kind of way you have to be kind of harsh and brutal with yourself. And you guess what? Whilst I wasn't looking with my, at my phone, I was interacting with colleagues and friends around the office. And that's what we need to do more of if we're really serious. Previously, a typical Gambian home had families who would interact regularly with elders telling moral tales to young people. However, such family culture is fading in the Gambia at a rapid rate. Families may live together, but many are individually closer to their phones than to one another. It is a change that affects society in general. Even if I'm in the sitting room with uh, everybody, in the living room with everybody, I won't have time to you know, talk with them because I'll be always on my phone. I won't know what's happening inside the house because I'm so occupied with my phone. Or sometimes I will leave the sitting room to go to my bedroom so I could have some peace of quiet and use my phone for whatever I need to use it for. There was a time we were sitting, chatting with my friends and we were all busy on our phones. And there is one old lady that passed and greeted us. So we are unable to um, greet her back. So he, st he stood and, you know, say bad things about us. Now, saying nowadays you kids are not polite and no, stuff like that. Yeah, the, uh, I can say the smartphone have, though it has a positive impact, but it's, it also has a negative impact on our life. The world today is called a global village a village where people have more care for a touch on the smartphone than any other contact. This can be positive, but the facility afforded by the smartphone can be abused. I mean, there are people who I have had arguments with. We've been in the same house, and I'm not making this up, and they're complaining that I did not respond to a message they sent me on WhatsApp. And I'm thinking, I'm sitting right next to you, just bloody well tell me. You know, why do I have to respond to your WhatsApp message? Speak to me. The use of the smartphone has both positives and negatives, but addiction to it can be dangerous to people's lives. There's no interaction between uh, family members. So it, it, it is doing a lot of damage, actually, in the society. And we are not aware, I don't know whether we are aware of these effects or we are not aware of it, but I know that a lot of people uh, can see the harmful effects. Because actually, a phone is, is used, you use a phone to help you, but now actually what the phone is doing is it is not helping us, it is destroying us. There will always be those who argue the pros and cons of the smartphone. What is not in dispute is that it dominates many lives. Mumud Lamin Choi, QTV News. Interesting story there by Mumud Lamin Choi on smartphones. The Japanese government has donated 300 metric tons of KR2 fertilizer and 50 metric tons of groundnut seeds to the Department of Agriculture for the underprivileged farmers. The donation items will be distributed across the country's six regions. Ajibintu Jame has more on the story. Every year, the Agricultural Ministry distributes fertilizers and machineries to Gambian farmers. As a country, over 80% of the Gambia's 2.2 million population depend on agriculture for food and income. However, due to low production yields, the country imports a lot of agricultural produce, estimates vary widely as to the exact percentage. Recently, agricultural production has declined. The donated fertilizers will be sold and the proceeds deposited in a protected account at the central bank for the benefit of the country's farmers. Lamin Kamara, Permanent Secretary of Ministry of Agriculture, explains its benefits. Mr. Kamara promised that the ministry will not allow businesses as the items are meant to benefit underprivileged farmers. These different stations that the fertilizers will be supplied are strategic in terms of access to farmers. Um, in, uh, uh, in conjunction with what uh, former GGC um, depots are. Um, I think this is critical, it's important, because um, the rains have started just two days ago and I want to make sure that this year, um, before actually farmers started sowing and uh, requiring fertilizer for their, I mean, their crops, 
we, we want to make sure that fertilizer reaches all of them. Those involved in selling the fertilizers will need to provide some form of collateral and prices will be pegged at $700 per bag. Lamin Kamara warns there will be serious consequences if anyone other than ministry officials are caught selling the fertilizers. He says that 39 more consignments are on the way. Mr. Kamara also encouraged the farmers to quickly take the opportunity and buy the products. Our advice to Gambian farmers, advice to Gambian people uh, to, uh, to really come out quickly to grab the fertilizer and not to allow outsiders to come um, uh, and, and uh, buy all the fertilizers. Um, uh, and at the end of the day, the stock is out and our farmers are not benefiting. At any time during this distribution, now or any time after now, that we are able to realize or see any other movement of fertilizer distribution that is not GGC, that is not this particular um, um, distribution, you will be, those people will be liable for, to be accountable for that process. And any fictitious movement of, or process in terms of fertilizer deal, as far as the sector is concerned, we are going to, I mean, take those people to police. One of the planned distribution points is the Bakau Horticultural Garden. In my interview with the farmers there, they were not convinced. Usman Diba, a farmer who has been farming for more than five years, said he has not noticed any distribution in the garden. He says that most farmers here buy fertilizers at local shops in small quantity, as buying a bag is quite expensive. Usman Diba adds that when the ministry starts distributing fertilizers, it will help farmers cut expenses. But ma kuma se diye but but e dani musuma ko gis because you know here manna am munyo manna am man gisuma ko me na man dal luma de luma de use dal dem ko de jenna me ko de jenna ci bitik den ci ñu bari tam du man ni gis ñi jenna ci bitik bi another farmer abdullahi ba explained the same issue wa farla sa bi ñun fi boko soxla dang koy jenn amna gaay yi koy jenn di ko jaayat fofu lañ koy jenn di ko def sun when we need fertilizer, we buy it at Saro. Fertilizer such as the granite shells for our garden. We buy in small quantities because it is quite expensive to buy in bulk. We never get it in the garden, maybe in other gardens opposite. But they never distribute fertilizer in this particular garden. The groundnut seeds will be loaned to the most underprivileged farmers and later paid in kind at the end of the growing season, with the monitoring from the Regional Agricultural Directorate. Farmers have been urged to ask and keep receipts for reference and monitoring purposes. Ajibintu Dwame, QTV News. Gambia's four-time Wasa Halad Award winner and one of the best artists of the past four years has arrived back in Banjul after attending a one-week award ceremony in the UK. QTV's Babu Karfati has more on the story. Sana Singate, commonly known as ST Brikama Boyo, has been making waves in the Gambia music and entertainment industry. ST, without a doubt, is currently one of the Gambia's most phenomenal, dramatic, and sensational artists. Starting his music career in 2006 in his hometown, Brikama, ST recorded and released his first song called Who is ST? In 2015, Brikama Boyo won the Wasalat Award for Artist of the Year. He has won the Artist of the Year Award every year since then, coupled with other winning categories. His winning stake has made him a living legend in the Gambian music industry. Earlier last month, the rap hip-hop artist announced his success at being nominated for the Artist of the Year Award by UK-based Gambia Interface TV. ST travelled to the UK to receive his award and returned after a week. On arrival, hundreds of his fans went to welcome him at the Banjul International Airport. Speaking to his wife Binta, she expressed her excitement at seeing her husband again after winning an award from the UK and also show her confidentiality in her husband. Alhamdulillah, like I've been saying, ever since he got the invitation, because um, this is what we wanted. ST is not only an artist. He, this is like, we are talking about a young man from Birkama that had a dream. And he made a promise to himself and the people around him that he has a dream to see Gambian music go to another level. And we are all seeing him walk on his dream. And I couldn't be more proud than, I've already, than I am right now. So I just want to urge everybody else. So we try to support him by his music, by his CD. He is one person that I'm very confident in. I know ST alone could take 
the Gambian music industry to another level. Speaking to QTV, Brikama's promoter Mustafa Jallo expressed his joy upon the arrival of ST and elaborated on the significance of the award. I'm feeling so excited. As you can see, the ambience. People came from different places to welcome ST. This is love. People being under the sun welcoming an artist for the first time I'm seeing this in Gambia, you know. So I'm, I'm, I'm really happy and I'm honored. So we called the people and they responded so good. So that alone, the response that they have done really impressed us. So we are happy. And ST went to represent the Gambia and thank God he came up with an award. That is the best artist of the year, 2018 and 2019. Another promoter and CEO of Skyworld Promotion, Omar Haidera, also expressed how delighted he is to receive become a boyo, ST at the Banjul International Airport. You know, like the English said, it takes hard work to make it big. There is a lot of joy and ambience for not only Brikama but the Gambia as a whole because he has been doing it big so I am more than the word of excited. I'm happy, I'm happy and I'm filled with joy. Finally, in an exclusive interview with QTV, the hip hop award winning artist talks about the award he has received and his achievement to date and the love he has been shown by Gambian in the diaspora. Well, this tells me a lot. You know, it tells me I'm on the right path. It tells me Gambians in the diaspora, Gambians in UK really do listen to our music regardless of the fact that they are not here. And it tells us that people believe in us, you know, and our country have our back because, you know, not only doing shows in Gamb uh, 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 being nominated in Gambia, being nominated abroad is, 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 is unique because uh, this is the first time I've seen any artist or heard any artist get awarded outside Gambia. So, you know, like, I mean, it, ch it, it changes everything. You know? Following his international awards, his fans in and outside the Gambia are looking forward to bigger and better things from the rapper in months and years ahead. Reporting for QTV News, I am Bawakar Fati. <laughs> Congratulations to ST on that award. Before we end this news bulletin, let's take a quick look at our main headlines. Diplomats, senior government officials and other dignitaries gathered at a hotel in Bijilo to commemorate 2nd July 1776, the day the resolution declaring U.S. independence was passed. As construction starts at the Basse Wooly Bridge, there are a variety of views on its expected benefits. Some see the bridge as a threat to their river-based businesses, others welcome the prospect. As smartphones outnumber the world's population, we ask how dangerous is this addiction? Are people spending more time with their phones than with friends and family? The Japanese government has donated 300 metric tons of KR2 fertilizer and 50 metric tons of groundnut seeds to the Department of Agriculture for the underprivileged farmers. The donated items will be distributed across the country's six regions. That is all we have for you in this edition of QTV News. Do join us tomorrow, same time for more news. Thanks for watching.